Well, yes, thank you, uh, Adi and Inbal and everyone for having us today. And thank you everyone else here for attending. Uh, my name is Jerry Wiltsey and I am a developer on the Conan team at JFrog. For today's talk, I'll be providing some high level explanations about the fundamentals of Conan, but also going through some actual code and live exercises to reflect what working with Conan is like in practice. Uh, the link in the QR code shown here on this slide will take you to all the resources for this talk. The slides will be posted there and links to the video eventually once the video has been posted. You can also rate this presentation and enter a raffle to win a Conan t-shirt. So uh, we will now post the link in the Zoom chat as well for those interested because I won't stay on this slide very long. And, uh, but yeah, that could be, um, we would love to have your feedback and we would love to send you a t-shirt. We also want to share uh, with you the dates of another event where I'll be speaking about Conan. That is JFrog's annual DevOps conference called Swamp Up. So we'll be holding the event online this year and running it twice, once for the US and once for um, Europe and Middle Eastern and African time zones. And those dates are shown here for EMEA. Uh, also, Ari has some additional information to share about Swamp Up and uh, some great, great tips there. So Ari, please, Go ahead if you like, if you are Great. ready. Uh, yep, no, I appreciate that. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jerry. Just uh, very briefly, uh, I'm not sure how many of you have come to Swamp Up before, but it is an amazing global DevOps conference and uh, we're gonna be doing it virtual this year, which will certainly make it accessible to so many more people. Um, on June the 2nd, which is the main conference day, um, that is a free pass day. But we also wanted to do something special for the meetup community as well. So what we've done is I put some instructions in the chat, but we have a deep dive technical tutorial day that's gonna be taking place on June the 3rd. That is a, there is a cost involved. However, uh, for those in the meetup community um, that uh, we're visiting uh, before the conference, I've just given you instructions in the chat on how to get that day for free. So uh, feel free to, if you click that link, the code is already there for you. All you have to do is go through the registration process and um, do what I said there in terms of selecting um, the registration um, correctly. And you're gonna get that uh, $49 extra day uh, for free. So enjoy it. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Awesome. Great tips. Thank you, Ari, that's a, a great resource. Um, Okay, so uh, we can move on to the exercises now, the fun part. For these exercises, I have created a reproducible environment which contains all the files for all the examples and I will use it to run the commands. Uh, the goal of this environment is that anyone can clone and run the repository or clone the repository and run the exercises rather um, on their own, on their own machine. Uh, the commands are all contained in the PDF of this presentation. So that should be all you need to get started. Of note, it is based on Docker, so you will need to have Docker installed, um, but uh, Docker does make it extremely easy to do this sort of thing, so that's why it was chosen. Uh, as long as you have Docker, it should work on Windows, Mac, or Linux. So if you try things out and you have any difficulties with, uh, with the demo on your local machine, please feel free to open a GitHub issue on that repository. Now, a word of warning, um, you know, this is live demo. So when you, whenever you do live coding demos and exercises, especially involving Docker, uh, things can go awry and they have gone uh, poorly in the past. So if we have technical difficulties, we apologize in advance and, uh, and we will continue to uh, try to work those out over time. So thank you in advance for your patience. So I'm going to bring up a, uh, a session now, a, a terminal. And I want to make sure you all can see that. Is that good? So now I'm going to run the commands that I showed on the previous slide. And we are all going to uh, do this adventure together and, and both prove that it works and there's no slideware and uh, you know prove that, uh, that it can be done by humans. So this is going to run um, and take perhaps a little bit of time. Nope. Uh, and here we will run. So that built the Docker images. It will take a little longer on your machines potentially if you run this locally, but uh, it isn't that long even in the worst case. So this has given us a 
a terminal, a Linux virtual machine to run some Conan commands and to run the Conan client or a Docker container rather. And also another Docker container, which is running Artifactory, which will host our uh, repository, our Conan repository that we'll use. All right. So there's a question if does this exercise, uh, is it supported on Windows? Yes, it, it should work on Windows, Linux, and Mac. So as long as you have Docker and can run Docker, you can run these exercises. Uh, so before I start doing um, the in-depth part of the examples, though, I do want to provide a brief introduction to Conan. Um, if you don't know already, Conan is a package manager for C and C++. It is open source and is published with an MIT license. It is also multi-platform, meaning it can run on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, and actually other places, anywhere Python can run, basically. So various flavors of Unix uh, can run it and are known to do so. So the support is very broad. Uh, Conan is designed to support all of the popular build systems in C and C++, as well as custom build systems, which is not an uncommon occurrence in enterprise software development. Um, Conan is stable, which means that there are no breaking changes within major versions. And uh, that is to say that packages built for Conan 1.0 will work for any future versions of Conan 1.0 or 1.x. Um, and if there's a breaking change to Conan or to the packages, it won't be until Conan 2.x is released. So it is it does uh, uh, fulfill the promises of Semver, the, the stability guarantees of Semver. Um, Conan is also very active. It has several full-time developers, which are sponsored generously by JFrog, and uh, as well as a very active user community, which submits dozens of pull requests each Hi. month. Um, so uh, our Slack channel has over 1,200 members, and it is one of the most active channels in the C++ community Slack. So that's worth noting. Um, finally, the Conan team has created multiple interactive self-paced training courses for Conan. Uh, these courses are all completely free and courtesy of JFrog on the online training platform known as the JFrog Academy. So if you'd like to go and learn more in depth and see more exercises, uh, you can visit the link below at the academy.jfrog.com and uh, take those exercises. Some great questions in the chat. Um, I have some members of the Conan team with me here and uh, they will field all of those. However, if there's any that re uh, require more elaborate responses, we can get to those at the end. So we do save some time at the end for Q&A. Uh, so the high-level design of Conan is fairly straightforward compared to other well-known package managers, such as NPM, uh, PyPI, Maven, Apt and Yum. Um, it features common concepts such as a local repository, which will be used for local Conan operations and package operations, and remote repositories for sharing packages with easy to use upload and download commands and capabilities. There's also a central moderated public repository for open source packages, and that's known as Conan Center. So Artifactory is a server application provided by JFrog, which can host remote Conan repositories. And that's what we'll be using today for all of our exercises, as I said, in a Docker container. Also of note, uh, Conan Center is simply a Conan repository hosted on Artifactory, but it's hosted in the cloud with a lot of resources and CDN assigned. So, um, Conan Center is hosted in the same way you could host your own private repositories. So the hosting and the moderation service and all the costs are provided and maintained by JFrog. So while Conan is similar to other package managers in these ways with its high level architecture, um, it's very unique in its package model. So this is where it gets interesting. Uh, the string shown here in the box of PKG 0.1 at user slash channel. Um, this is an example of what we call a recipe reference in Conan. So this is the most simple and straightforward logical identifier there is for packages in Conan. This is what they look like. So one of the unique things about this recipe reference uh, compared to other package managers is that it can represent any number of separate physical binaries with unique build configurations. So you have one recipe reference and you can build 
any number of physical binaries related to and stored behind that reference. So this package model in which one identifier represents any number of unique build configurations is one of Conan's major innovations. So here's how Conan implements that. In simple terms, Conan assigns a unique ID for each unique configuration. This unique ID is called the package ID. And Conan uses that string for various things throughout the build and packaging process. For example, uh, the package ID is used as a fundamental part of the directory structure for storing Conan packages in the local cache. Um, and it's also visible on the server implementations. Um, it's used for many other things as well. But uh, this graphic depicts how um, the differences in the build, the typical differences we see in build configuration. So for example, if you're building a shared library versus a static library and all other settings are the same, you'll still get two different binaries. So we still end up with two different package IDs. And those two package IDs are tracked and stored and transferred separately. So that is the theory. And again, one of the fundamental innovations behind Conan's package model. So the client and server also use the package ID as the matching mechanism when uploading and downloading binaries from the remote repositories. So for most operations you do in Conan, you are implicitly or explicitly specifying a build configuration. With this configuration, the Conan client will calculate the package IDs for all of the packages that you're trying to use, and it will use the package IDs for the interactions with the server. Typically, it will go out to the server and fetch the appropriate package ID for each package and download them all in one operation. Also, once you've built or downloaded a specific binary package on your local machine, that binary can be used across any number of projects on the same machine with the same configuration. So with Conan, there's no need to rebuild the same library binary multiple times with the same configuration just to use it in a bunch of different consumer projects. Um, so for something like OpenSSL, you can build it just once or once per configuration, and you can use that OpenSSL binary in any number of consuming projects. So this cache uh, provides a very efficient binary sharing strategy. Um, as I said, Conan uses the build configuration as the input for calculating these package IDs. Here are two in-depth examples of Conan build configurations, which we generally refer to as profiles in Conan. So this is the text-based format. You can also specify profiles as command line arguments, or you can mix the two. Um, so users can store these as text files in this format, and then just pass the file names to the various Conan commands. So this is a much more manageable approach to passing these values when compared to passing each of these values as an individual argument. So we will use both of these profiles here in our upcoming exercises today. We want to demonstrate Conan's cross-platform capabilities. So we're going to do everything that we do once on Linux and then once on Windows with a Microsoft compiler. One final note about profiles is that they also allow you to do something else, which is very powerful. It's not necessarily what you would consider a build configuration. It's something a little different. Profiles allow you to specify build tools, which you wish to be made available in your builds. So this is done with the build requires section of the profile as highlighted here in yellow. In this example, we specified that we want to use CMake version 3.19.0 for all the builds in our graph, which require CMake. This implies that there's been a Conan package created, which contains CMake 3.19.0, and Conan will make the CMake executable from that package available via the path environment variable um, throughout the package build process. So you can then for, uh, therefore use build requires as an alternative to installing these build tools such as CMake and others directly into your systems um, and your user systems. So for teams who are very distributed or for organizations who have want to have tool consistency across a number of automated build servers and things like this, creating Conan packages of build tools and uh, using them via the Conan build requires feature can offer a lot of advantages and make it a lot easier to get consistency and guarantee and also to move things forward uh, at the same time. 
So there's much more to say about build requires, um, but we'll use this one um, in our exercises today and we'll talk a little more about it when we get there. So the other major innovation of Conan, which we wanna mention here, is the abstraction layer that it provides over build systems. When developing applications in a team, it's typical, um, a typical requirement that each developer should be able to build the entire application from source, including all of its dependencies like libraries and other things um, along the way. Many C and C++ libraries and applications um, have multiple open source dependencies. So unfortunately, open source C and C++ dependencies often have unique and complex build systems and scripts related to those build systems. And so learning all of that is a major burden for C and C++ developers who want to focus on the code, not on arcane build scripts and build systems and all of the complexity that goes with that. So Conan aims to reduce this burden on the developer. Uh, and that's a big goal of using a package manager as an abstraction in general. Once an open source project has been packaged with Conan, uh, the users of Conan no longer need to interact with that build system directly just to use it, just to consume it. Uh, instead, users can just install such projects with the Conan install command, and Conan will handle all of the necessary interactions with the build system in the background behind the scenes. This is a great uh, utility of Conan, and it's a huge part of the value proposition. Okay. So earlier I said we can start the exercises. Now we can really start the interactive exercises. Uh, so for our first exercise, we're going to demonstrate a seemingly simple goal, which is to get an open source dependency from Conan Center and use it in our CMake project. It's worth noting that the open source dependency happens to be Boost Regex. Uh, this is relevant because getting and using Boost libraries has historically been a non-trivial endeavor for most developers. So here we'll show how Conan makes that process easier. And the key command that we're going to take away from this exercise is Conan install. That is the fundamental um, feature that we're going to use. Here are the relevant files for the exercise, uh, just to put everything out in the open. Um, we've got a single source file named regex.cpp, which includes boost regex.hpp. So there's the dependency at the source level. Now, um, in this case, we declare that we need boost version 1.74.0 and that we're using the CMake build system. So you can see that here in the Conan file.txt box. So Conan file.txt is where we specify things related to Conan and our dependencies. And here we see CMake find package. Um, there we are specifically saying that we want to provide the dependency to our project in a way that's compatible with CMake's find package feature. And over here, then we see the CMake list file, which tells CMake how to build our source. And we can see that we're indeed using CMake's find package feature to locate boost and boost regex specifically with the required keyword. Um, so this demonstrates that, uh, well, notice first that this CMake list file does not contain anything specific or proprietary to Conan. It is a vanilla CMake list file. Uh, this demonstrates that any existing CMake projects using find package can now use dependencies from Conan without needing to make any modifications to the CMake list file to do so. This is noteworthy because it hasn't always been this way. Uh, the CMake team has had to work very hard for several years with the community to achieve this capability of complete transparency with CMake's find package feature. So here are the commands that I'm about to run. Uh, again, these commands are available in the slides. So uh, once you have the slides, you can run them yourself. The operative command again is Conan install. So the Conan install command here will download all of the dependencies listed in the Conan file that we just showed. And it will also download all of the transitive dependencies of boost regex. So anything boost regex requires, and anything that those requirements require will all be downloaded automatically with the Conan install command. After downloading all of the dependencies, Conan will generate a number of files to be used in the upcoming CMake build. Uh, one of those files is activate.sh, which we use in the next command, uh, source activate.sh, which you can see um, 
here, the fourth line. Um, remember that we talked about build requires and CMake. So the activate.sh script is, uh, exposes the CMake executable from the Conan package where it exists to our current shell. It prepends the uh, bin directory from the package where the executable is to our path environment variable. And this is how we make use of CMake from our Conan package. So Conan generates shell scripts, which allow you to use the contents of those packages at your shell. So again, uh, there's a lot to say about build requires and these uh, script generators. So we explain a lot more about those and uh, it's called the virtual environment feature in the courses in the JFrog Academy. So if you'd like to mo learn more about this really cool part of Conan, um, definitely go check out the courses in the Academy. But for now, we're just going to use it. So after that, we'll just run our normal build system commands and my build system will automatically find and use the dependencies provided by Conan, again, based on the generated files that Conan produced. In this case, we'll run cmake.dot to configure our project, a very traditional workflow with cmake, and then cmake-build to execute the build. So that's going to create uh, an executable called regex underscore exe. And when we run it with, a, with the input string here, um, we will get an output which has been transformed by the boost regex library. Uh, so in this case, just uh, the little uh, demo we're doing is that we're taking um, email subject strings that start with the words subject colon and re colon, and uh, it parses out using boost regex the, the prefix part, and it spits out a string that says regarding Conan. So it just transforms can, can one string. Question? Yes, go ahead, Shaw. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I work with Conan, uh, or at least uh, studied it and uh, worked with my own projects for a while, and I think it's great. I, I want to make sure something that, uh, to, to know if I understand it correctly, in the third line, you actually install with the profile that used GCC 7, but uh, implicitly you, you assume that GCC 7 is in your environment. Like in this uh, scenario, as, as you put it, you uh, Conan does not uh, guarantees that actually GCC 7 will run. Is that true? That is true and also a great point. Um, the, it's a very it confusing comes, thing I, uh, for me, like, uh, so I wanted to, uh, to, to, to check it. Okay. Yes, worth pointing out, uh, as we said, we provide CMake to the build process using the build require. We do not do the same thing in this example with GCC, the compiler, or any of the related tools, the linker, the archiver, things like that. It is possible to do that with build requires, and we do know of enterprise teams doing that, especially with cross compilers. People have packaged their compilers into Conan packages and use them in this way. However, um, a lot of other organizations, they tend to use compilers that come with the operating systems, um, you know, especially with regard to GCC. But on the Windows side, you know, it's a different story as well. Um, but it's a great point. And so, yes, we're effectively just labeling now and saying, that this is going to be a GCC7 build. We're instructing Conan that this will be GC7. And it is up to us who manages the environment, in our case, a Docker container, that GCC7 is, in fact, what is installed in the environment. It is up to us. So that part is out of band. Very good point. Thank you. All right. So now let us bring our shell up once again. And let us uh, just run the commands. So I already narrated them once. Hopefully, um, we uh, it, it makes sense as I go through them. So we are going to make a directory called build Linux and cd into it. Uh, because as I said before, we are generating files with the Conan install command. And we want those uh, you know, with a specific profile. And this will be a folder for a specific build configuration. Um, and then we are going to do the same thing for Windows. So we don't want, we want those two folders to be separate. So here I run the Conan install and there are quite a few things to point out during this process. Um, I will pause and say that um, here you can see that it is looking up boost, then it is looking up zlib and bzip2 and liboncon-v and then cmake. So while we only listed boost as the dependency and CMake as a build require, Conan takes care of the difficult process of transitive dependency management. So it's a really important part of what a package manager provides in general. 
Another thing to point out here is that we are downloading boost 174 as we see. And the key file here is called Conan package.tgz. And if you look closely, you can see that the size is 20 megabytes. That is a, a testament to, obviously we all know, most of us know that boost traditionally is much bigger than 20 megabytes. So what it's actually downloading here is the very specific single build of boost that is a static library built with GCC7 on Linux uh, release mode uh, for 64 bit. So that, that one single binary and the headers is the only things contained in this. And so that's how Conan provides a much more efficient experience than perhaps other approaches to obtaining and, and using boost, which uh, often downloads huge files or the entire source and, re and you know building it multiple times. So very efficient and it made the download very quick. So there we have it. The output here shows all of the things that Conan generated. If you're familiar with CMake and the fine package uh, system, you know that it is based on each library and each component having a find.cmake file. Um, and so we produce one for each dependency in the tree and those we could, we could look at, but we won't today, but they're there in our current directory. So this was all produced by a CMake, uh, a generator, what's called a Conan generator named CMake find package. And the scripts, as I mentioned before, these shell scripts of activate.sh and deactivate.sh, those are produced by a generator called virtual environment. Uh, and so Conan can use any number, can generate any number of files for any number of build systems in one shot simply by adding the list of generators. It's a very ex uh, extensible feature and a very important part of Conan. So we are going to leverage the first generated script called activate.sh. Before I do that, I'm going to type which CMake and show that I do have CMake installed on this system under user bin CMake. And if I do CMake dash dash version, it is 3.9.1. However, after I activate and I type which CMake, you can see now that CMake is located in a deep nested subdirectory of the Conan cache. So this simply proves, you don't need to understand the entire Conan cache. This simply demonstrates that we are using now CMake from that location. And when I type CMake dash dash version, here we have not 3.9, but 3.19. So uh, very novel part there. So now with our new CMake, we will run the configuration step. We um, do specify two arguments there. I will tap the up arrow. Uh, the, this final argument is worth noting. This tells CMake to look in the current directory for additional CMake modules, such as the ones generated by Conan. And this is how we get Conan or CMake to uh, transparently find Conan's features. It's not entirely transparent in that we pass an extra command line argument. It's transparent in that we don't have to modify any CMake files to do so. Okay. Great. Now let's build our project with our CMake file. Great. So it built a target named regex exe. And let me just check the chat to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Great. And in order to run that on Linux, we do, excuse me, we do, we run regex dot slash regex exe, and then uh, we pass it this string and it's going to transform that string if I don't. Uh, and there we get the output that I said we would get regarding Conan. So it parses out the information. So that was pretty quick in terms of using boost to produce a little executable. Um, you know, from a package manager is a pretty simple demo, pretty effective. We also want to run a command called source deactivate.sh. And what that does is if I type which path again, as you can imagine, uh, sorry, which CMake, you can see that we've now reverted the current shell back to using the CMake in the system. So these virtual environments, similar to Python virtual environments, if you're familiar with those, but um, it allows you to, uh, add and remove things from Conan packages from your shell. Okay, so now I will CD back to the source repository. 
Now we will go back briefly to the slides. And a very timely question just popped up in the chat about how easy or hard is it to use Conan with Visual Studio on Windows. Let's look. So we have here now uh, the exact same exercise that we just did on Linux. This time it's on Windows, and this time it's for Visual Studio. Still using CMake as the build system. Oh, OK, there we go. Star without CMake. Well, that's another question entirely. Um, but it is possible, and it, it the process is, in spirit, identical. Uh, so, But that's a, a good question. I've highlighted in green the parts of these commands which are different to account for Windows. but Everything else, if it's not highlighted in green, is identical. So I will breeze through this um, and say that, um, let me see here, one moment. Right, so the directory name is different. The profile name is different. Again, it's up to us to guarantee that we have Visual Studio 16 installed. Um, Instead of using source, we use the call command. And instead of a .sh script, it's a .bat script. Also, we have, um, instead of PWD as the thing, we have this CD environment variable um, to tell uh, CMake to look in the current directory. And then additionally, when you run CMake for a, a Windows Visual Studio project, you have to specify a configuration. So we specify the release config, which is a little different. And when we execute our binary, the syntax is slightly different. We have to run it. But the program is the same. We still pass the same string. We still get the same output. And uh, we still deactivate our shell. So let's do it. All right. So we will now bring up our shell once again. I will leave this Linux shell in place. I will open a new shell for this part. We'll CD into our repository. We will cd into the exercise directory, and we will make directory for build windows and cd into that. And now we'll do the conan install command. Again, this is the magic command we're focused on here, is conan install, um, giving it a specific profile. So that went a little faster um, because I had downloaded previously on my machine. This is a good opportunity to show that this tells us that boost bzip, liboconv, this, uh, this output, were all found in the cache. They did not need to be downloaded. So we didn't have to wait for that. So this goes to the point I made earlier about reusing binaries once you've used them for one project and they're in your cache. That development machine can reuse those binaries for any number of projects, as long as it's using the same config. It still generated all of the files that were needed. So the find package files .cmake and the scripts to um, the scripts to add CMake to the path. Excuse me, copy paste is the hard thing. So we call the activate script. We type where on, on Linux or on Windows, we type where CMake. And here you can see that it is preferred. It was prepended to the Conan directory. But it also shows that another version of CMake exists at a different path. But um, we will now do the CMake configuration. You can see it's using Visual Studio 16, as I indicated by the profile name. I will run the build command, and then I will execute the binary that was produced. So here you can see the output if I zoom out a little bit. Uh, regex underscore exe dot exe. I will run that in the release directory and we get our output. We give it the string and we get our output. Okay. Now, normally I will stop and take questions here in between um, exercises, but I know we have a little bit of a, of a compressed time scale. We have so, there's a, some things we want to go, uh, Adi mentioned at the end, we want to make time for. So I will, I will take questions at the end. So please do write them down if I don't, um, if you don't get them answered in the chat. All right, so we did that, it worked. No technical difficulties yet, that is a win. Um, so now we are going to move, oh, well, we're going to quickly summarize what we just learned. Um, the process of consuming a Conan package is one use case for Conan. If you don't wanna use Conan for anything else, you can use it to obtain open source, 
third-party dependencies and use them in your build system um, without coupling your development process any further to Conan. Um, the command to do so is Conan install. This obtains the dependencies and generates files for build systems. Um, consuming OSS packages can be simple, as we've just shown. Uh, and in C++, that is, has relatively, uh, has not been the case uh, up until relatively recently. Um, Conan can provide dependencies and the information for those to any build system. So this includes CMake, which has a fairly sophisticated dependency management feature called Find Package, but it also includes custom build systems and for which you can generate a text file with the dependency information in it. Um, as long as you know the format that your build system needs, you can create a generator to produce the information for that build system. Uh, custom generators is one of the most frequently used extensibility features of Conan, and almost all enterprise organizations that we work with and talk to on a regular basis have written at least one custom generator for their different use cases. So it is very um, easy to get into, easy to do, and uh, it's something that um, we're, we're really excited about. Uh, finally, Conan Center provides many packages for popular C and C++ projects which include pre-compiled binaries for many uh, different platforms and configurations, but not all. So if you're, if you're doing development for an Arduino or for a Raspberry Pi, we're not going to have the binaries you need. But if you're using a mainstream compiler and operating system like Windows and Visual Studio 2019 or Linux with GCC 8.9 or you know, newer, um, we often will have uh, good configurations uh, pre-built for you um, to try. However, if we don't have the binaries built that you need, it's really important that everyone understand that there's an additional flag to Conan install. And that flag is dash dash build. The dash dash build flag lets users choose to build all or some of the dependencies from source on the fly. So, uh, and even if you just simply don't trust the binaries in Conan Center or don't want to use pre-compiled binaries, it's another reason to just pass the dash dash build flag and you can tell Conan while downloading also build from source. The process will take much longer, but all the binaries you end up with will be simply built with your compiler and your tool set on your machine. Um, so there are many situations when you might want to use this. Your organization may have a policy against pre-compiled binaries and so forth. So, um, you know, understanding Conan install, we really also want you to understand the power of the dash dash build flag. Okay, now I would like to talk about Conan recipes. Um, I want to explain what a recipe is and then show some examples of them. But in simple terms, a Conan recipe is a Python class which Conan will read and execute in order to create a Conan package. Obviously we've used some Conan packages, so that means there are recipes for those packages somewhere that someone has written, which takes care of all the difficulty of interacting with the build system. So let's see what that looks like. So here's an example of a Conan recipe. As we said, it's a Python class and it features a number of standard method names. Uh, these method names all correspond to traditional steps in the process of building a C++ project. Um, for example, um, in the requirements method, we declare our project dependencies. Um, that's perhaps less common in the traditional build process. Um, and, but in the export sources method, we define which sources Conan will need to capture in order to do uh, to build the project. So maybe you don't need to capture the README or the you know Jenkins file or something like this. You just need to capture the C files and the header files, and that's what you need to build. So that's what export sources does. Um, now in the generate method, we produce the files for the build system, which contain all the variables we need. So if you recall, we we generated a bunch of find package CMake scripts that will take place inside the generate method. Uh, moving forward. In the build method, we invoke the build system, which will, you know, call CMake or call MS build or call make in order to build the sources into the binaries that we want. Then finally, in the package method, we capture those binaries which were built and we copy them to a package directory. Uh, this includes uh, shared libraries, static libraries, header files, anything at all that was produced and that we need to transmit to our consumers. Uh, then I guess I should say finally now in the package info method, 
we declare the contents of the package directory that we just captured and populated for the consumers. So for example, if we captured some static libraries, the package info method will list what are the names of those static libraries. So for the linkers of the consumers. Um, and then what are the directory names, if they're in subdirectories, where we can find those libraries to link with. Also, we, it defines uh, the directory for the headers and also other variables like C, uh, um, the preprocessor directives and things like this. Environment variables can be defined here. So again, the package info method describes the contents of the package as needed by the consumers. So Conan will call each of these methods in the appropriate order when you run the, the creation process. Now here's another example of a recipe and this one has the methods actually defined. So it's a little less abstract. It's also, um, we simplified things a little bit. Uh, of note, the project being packaged with this recipe here is a CMake project. So it takes advantage of several CMake specific helper classes that the Conan team provides which makes the recipes a little easier to read and write. Um, and we'll show an alternative to that next. Um, so first in the requirements method, as I said, we declare dependencies. And this is what the syntax looks like for that. You call self.requires and you list your dependencies. Um, next in the S-Pore sources method, it declares that in this case, we're going to capture all files in the working directory as potential sources for the build. As I said, you could filter out files that don't matter but this uh, star is easy for demonstration. Um, next, the generate method uses two helper classes, uh, which produce .cmake files from Conan variables. This includes all the information CMake will need for the upcoming build. Uh, as we said, it creates the find boost.cmake. Um, it also creates a, a tool chain file, which has other variables related to um, the settings that you pass to Conan in the profile. So I won't go into detail about those, but uh, generate, this is where it produces these files. And in the build step, we will consume those files. So the build method uses another helper called the CMake helper class. It's just called CMake. Uh, and this will, when we run CMake.configure and CMake.build methods in the Conan recipe, C, uh, Conan will invoke the CMake executable at the shelf for us. These helpers just make it a lot easier to get the command line syntax right, get spaces and quotes right, avoid common errors. Um, but you could just uh, do self.run and uh, write your command line string raw exactly how you want it to go to CMake and not use the helper. And we'll see that in the next slide. But ultimately it translates all the arguments correctly and it gets, um, it, it's helpful to use the helper particularly in CMake's case. Finally, the package method also uses the CMake helper to do the install method. And this actually runs the CMake install target. So a lot of CMake projects define what's called an install target, which defines kind of the runtime layout that the produced artifacts should go to. And Conan allows us to make use of that target by doing this, giving this CMake install function and in the notes here in the teal, you can see that it's, it sets the CMake install prefix variable to the appropriate directory in the Conan cache to make use of it. So it's a really neat trick and it's very helpful. Uh, finally, as I said, package info, we need to declare where we put files in the package folder and what files we put. So we have an include directory uh, and we list that as the set of include dirs. This will be translated into the dash I compiler flags that we would see later in consumer projects. The list of library directories will translate to traditionally for GCC minus capital L as a lib directory. And so we put all the libs in the lib directory. And then finally, the libs is the list of libraries that we produced. Up here, we can see the name of our package is called mylib. And it's going to produce a static library called mylib. Um, that's not shown here, but we can imagine that that's the case. And so down here, when we say libs equals mylib, we're saying the linker needs to link with mylib. That's, that's what this package produces is a library named my lib mylib.a, or on Windows, it would be mylib.lib. Um, and so this is the abstract declaration of what's in this package. And we, the, the generators are what converts this to, gener, uh, to build system specific files. 
Some great interaction going on in the chat. Great questions, great answers. Thanks everyone for participating there. All right, here's the third example of a recipe and then we'll, we'll run and create the, the package out of this recipe. Uh, this one is very similar to the previous example, which you see make. However, we want to demonstrate what a recipe looks like when you're using a custom build system for which Conan provides no helper classes, which is very, very common. If you're going to use Conan professionally, your recipes might look a little more like this if you have non CMake projects. So first, um, the requirements and exports statements, those are the same, that's great. For the generate method, uh, you'll need to write your own function if you're using a custom build system, which takes the variables from Conan um, and writes them to text files in some format your build system could read. Maybe uh, your build system reads YAML files or .txt files or um, .make files for, dot, you know, for make or a make derivative. Um, again, it's trivial to write a custom generator uh, or you can just write the function here that takes information, take, we pass you variables in your generate function and you can convert those to text files and you can write them to disk. So that is the purpose of the generate command. We don't show a complete generator, but we do show that you'll need one. Then in the build method, you will need to call your custom build system um, and any number of other CLI applications that you might want to run. Many build methods are more than just a single command. They're 10, 20, 30 commands long to instrument and orchestrate a custom build system. But you could do whatever you want in the build system. You have all in the build method. You have all the power of Python uh, at your disposal and a lot of helper methods from Conan for running and for reading files and writing files. So um, very, very flexible way to define a build process. Next in the package method, if we don't have an install target like CMake provides, we need to declare and specify what is this build system producing and how do we want to store the resultant files in our package folder. We can take li static libraries, shared libraries, and we can put them in whatever folder layout we want in the package folder. So we do that here. Uh, the self.copy function is a helper function that you will see all the time in Conan. Um, it has very flexible optional parameters for source and destination directories, and it's pattern-based. So you can just say, find all the headers in the, in the resulting directory and throw them all into an include directory. Or you can find only the ones that exist in a source directory. If there's header files laying in the root, those would be skipped. So we use the same pattern for DLL files, lib files, dilib files, so files. We put those in, well, DLLs go into a bin directory traditionally, the rest go into a lib directory traditionally. So this package method using patterns and a sort of um, generic folder structure for the destination is a way to provide a cross-platform method that will capture all of the outputs of this build, um, no matter what platform it's run on. So this is sort of a, you know, take a messy output layout on any number of, of operating systems and org organize it into a package folder of, um, of a generic structure. So that's what we do here. And then again, it doesn't actually matter what folder structure we want to use to store those files because we can describe it in the package info method however we want. So in this case, we simulated the CMake install by also just using the same structure. The headers went into an include directory, the lib directory, all the libs went into a lib directory, and the libs was named, there was a single library and it's named mylib. But we could have defined any folder structure we wanted in the package uh, method, as long as we properly described it down here in the package info method. Um, that maybe is, is abstract and it takes a little practice once you're writing recipes to see how that works out. But hopefully now you can understand sort of the, the process of the, what the recipe does in what order and the ultimate, the final way that Conan captures artifacts and provides them to consumers. Okay, that is uh, a lot about Conan recipes, but it is a core, you know, fun fundamental piece of Conan. So we really want people to understand when they look in Conan Center, for example, when what they're seeing um, and give them some context when they see those recipes to understand what's happening. All right, now we are going to create a Conan package and of note, it is the same project as the previous example. 
we're going to replace conanfile.txt with conanfile.py. Um, and we're going to define all of the required methods in the conanfile.py. Uh, then we're going to create a package from that recipe. Uh, and the key command we want to take away here is conan create. That is conan create a package. Um, as a reminder, our source file was named regex.cpp and it depended on boost regex. Uh, we say that the conanfile.py will show that next, but we just want to show the CMake lists is identical to the one we did we used in the first exercise. So here is our actual Conan recipe that we're going to use. And as you can see, when you the, the former ones were a generic case that showed all of the methods we needed. When we have a real simple uh, package, the recipe gets a little simpler and it's easier to look at. We um, only use four of the methods. Those are the only four required for this particular package. Uh, we named it appropriately. So the package will be named regex 0.1.0. Um, we're not going to talk about the settings line today, but this simply uh, defines some of the things that go into the package ID calculation. And finally, we say that we want to generate the CMake find package generator in the virtually NV files, just like we did in the consumption exercise. But we are saying here that we need it for the build method. Okay. As we mentioned earlier, we'll use the Conan create command, which will use our recipe to build our package and create the package from it. After we create the package, we do want some way to show that it works. To be honest, the exercise is a little boring if all we do is run the Conan create command. It's a single command. That's not really what we want to show. Uh, it's not really enough to show, I should say. After we run Conan create, the rest of these commands are a way to demonstrate the executable works from the Conan package. So just like we ran CMake executable from a Conan cache, we are going to test our executable, our regex executable, from its package location after it's been created. So that's the goal here. Um, and that's why we run Conan create on the second line. And then we make a directory called run Linux, and we CD into it. And then we uh, behave like we did in the previous example where we are now consuming. So we run Conan install of our package reference of regex. Um, we generate the virtual EN, uh, run ENV generator. We pass it the same profile because we say we want to use the one that we built with Linux GCC 7 release mode. Um, and then we use the same source activate trick to get that executable on our path. Then we run it and we get the same output. Again, going a little quickly for the purposes of time, um, so I apologize for that. Um, we will take questions at the end. Okay, so where's our session here? So we will go back to our Linux shell on the left. And we will CD to um, the examples directory once again. This is the create package example. And we will run Conan create command as we did before. Sorry. As we did before, passing it the profile, the same profile we've been using. And uh, this will then in, uh, do everything that we said in the recipe. We'll gather the sources. It will download the requirements. It will run the build and then it will package the results of the build and put them in our local cache. And we see here, uh, you can see hopefully the, the CMake was executed here. This is CMake logs. And then down here at the very end, we see package created and we packaged one file regex exe underscore exe. So we just want to run now that executable and make sure that it does what we expect it to do. So we run Conan install, and now we give the reference because in this log, it prints out the full reference the, of the package that was created. So it, it combined the name and the version and also the two arguments we passed at the command line, demo slash demo. So now when we run our install, 
we pass that same reference. So we're saying we want to install that with the virtual running in vGenerator into the current directory. So we will try that. And we can see here that we have generated the virtual environment scripts once again. And if I activate and I type which, oh, I should note, um, well, I'll just simply run it with the which command. If I do which regex exe, just like the CMake example we did before, our path now finds that executable in the Conan cache. So we can run it without having to pass that whole path, right? There we go. So we passed the string and we got the expected result. So that was fantastic. We will once again then deactivate that environment and CD back. Okay. I will now go to the next slide and we'll do the same for Windows again. The, again, part of the compl complexity of this demo is to show the cross-platform nature and power of Conan and just how similar the workflows are on Windows and Linux and Mac OS is the same. Um, again, we just have the green highlights that are different. We have the different profile, the different folders, slightly different semantics and syntax for calling the, the binaries, but more or less the process is the same in spirit. So let's do that very quickly. I'm going to leave the Linux shell and now enter the Windows shell again. Remember the right commands. Okay, so we are now under Windows. The Conan command is the same. The Conan create command has no differences on Windows and Linux. So that part's good. We will go quickly because at the end, we really want to show that final thing, uh, the thing we talked about very early on, which is how the binaries live side by side under a single package reference. Okay, we did it. Um, if we look down here, package was created and we packaged one exe file with this file name. So it invoked CMake, everything's the same. Um, it packaged the one exe file and now we want to use that. I will check the chat real quick if there's any important things that I'm missing. I do see, yes, it's uh, it's good to note that there's a, there are actually more than one virtual environment generator and we have used two, they're slightly different. Um, and I did breeze over that. So glad to see that that was asked and being addressed in the chat. So we want to run our executable in our run windows directory. Um, to do that, we just need to produce the activate run script we do that. It's also worth noting after we run the activate scripts, it always puts a little prefix on our shell that tells us that we have actively loaded a Conan environment. Failed to mention that earlier, but there it is. Okay, we got the same result on Windows. Let's deactivate, which as you can see now, after I ran the deactivate, this Conan run ENV prefix is now gone. And we have run the same thing on Windows. We ran our executable. We got the same result. OK. So we are cross-platform packaging and building now. So this is exciting. To quickly summarize what we did, um, we showed the recipe format, what it looks like, how it works. We walked through uh, each of the standard methods for creating a package. You have requirements, export sources, which gather sources. And then you build and package the artifacts, and then you describe what you built and packaged with the package info. There are a handful of additional methods which are optional, which you can read about in the docs and see in, in other training sessions. This, these are some sort of the most fundamental and the basic requirements for most recipes. And finally, yes, Conan calls these methods in a particular order. There are other workflows as well. 
Um, you can just call the build method. Sometimes you can just call the source method uh, for, for different um, workflows, but this is the core process for creating a package from scratch. So our final exercise, we're almost done, is now to upload the package we just created to a remote repository. That includes uploading from the Linux build and uploading from the Windows build environments. So we're going to upload effectively two different binaries for the same package, and we're going to see what happens. Uh, so first, we're going to review the list of remote repositories. Then we're going to add a new repository, which is in our Docker environment. Um, the repository has just been created automatically for us when we started up that Docker environment. So we're not going to go through the process of creating a new repository on Artifactory. There are other courses for that. Um, but of note, Artifactory CE was a great fit for this demo because it's free to use and it's specifically designed for hosting Conan repositories and making it easy in a local small environment like this. So on that server, we've got a repository named Conan local, and we are going to upload our package to it. So let's do that. As I said, we'll start by listing the existing repositories, and we should see Conan Center, uh, and then we'll add our new repository with the name of Artifactory. That's what we're going to call it here. And then we're going to give the URL of our demo environment. Since this is a private remote repository and we want to upload packages to it, we have to provide credentials in order to do that. So the Conan user command is how you provide credentials for a remote repository to give yourself write access. Obviously, you can't um, upload to Conan Center. Uh, you won't have credentials to do it. Even if you did so on accident, it wouldn't let you. Um, so uh, next, we should be able to upload our hello pack or our uh, regex package to the repository. And um, then finally, at the end, we will use the Conan search command to search our remote and see what the results look like on the remote server. So that's that's sort of the the last moment, the uh, the payoff is that we'll get to see that we've built these packages and now they're coexisting together in a single place on a remote server shared with the rest of our team. Okay. Let's do that. I will bring up the shell. We will jump back over to the Linux environment. We will full screen it. Excuse me. Clear. So if I do Conan remote list, we should see Conan Center. As I said, Conan Center comes by default when you install Conan. It is the only official repository that comes installed by default. We will then use the Conan remote add command. We will add with name Artifactory and with the URL that corresponds to my Docker container. Your Docker container, if you run it locally, should be the same URL with the same ports, assuming you don't change anything before you start it up. Okay, let's run Conan remote list once more. Do we have it? We do. Artifactory is listed here, the second one. Now we can specify a user and a password for Artifactory. Admin and password are the default credentials for Artifactory CE. Now we should try to upload. So Conan upload our regex package to Artifactory and upload all binaries. So here we see uploading regex. It has uploaded the reference of regex 0.1.0 at demo slash demo and a single binary, one binary package from the Linux machine to that remote repository. Okay, so let us quickly do Conan search for that on Artifactory and we should see one binary. Yes, we see we have an existing recipe um, with a single package ID listed. And here the search command is a very nice output, it can also come in JSON with settings of the architecture, the build type, the compiler, the version, the C++ standard library we used and the list of dependencies as well. Great, great feedback, great piece of output. Okay. It's important to say that uh, for uh, um, industrial use, I also every specific flag you use to create your own package will also be there. 
Yes, yes, it, it is very, um, it takes into a, a lot of information and it produces a lot of information. Um, that, that output gets pretty long. There are ways to filter that output as well. That's worth noting. Now over on our Windows machine, let's make sure we, you know, we still only have one binary. The whole point, apologies, we're going to get a clean start here. All right. Again, our goal is to upload in, in a traditional environment. If you have multiple platforms, you have CI with build machines that build on different platforms, you will end up uploading the same package, but different binaries from many different machines from, from your build infrastructure usually. So we're simulating that here. Um, and I will add Artifactory once again. I will provide the credentials once again. And then we will upload the regex package. Now here we see that it uploaded the regex recipe, but also it uploaded one binary package. This, bi this package ID, it is different from the one that we built on the Linux machine. So now when we do the search, if we cross our fingers, we should see two binaries. Yes, so there is a problem with, uh, which I apologize for. All right, so there we now see that if we do the search, Conan search for regex, we have package ID. This was the Windows build. And here we see it is Visual Studio, Windows, Visual Studio 16, release the MD build. And here were the dependencies on Windows. And we see a separate package ID from the Linux build, which was the one we had before. So in many environments, you will have four, eight, 16, 32 different binaries for a package such as regex, depending on how many build targets and how many configurations you need to build and test for your team. So again, this drives home the original point and the original innovation of Conan, which is a single recipe reference can contain any number of binaries. And those binaries are managed separately. They're downloaded and uploaded separately. It's a very efficient, um, and intelligent process. If we have time, I th which I think we may, um, Adi, uh, do you have a time limit? Um, are we approaching a, how do you feel about time? I can jump over and show how it looks in Artifactory. Well. Yeah, you can take a, a few more minutes. Okay, actually, so I'm, I'll, I'll just jump to, I just want to finish out the slides and then we can do that if we have time at the very end. Um, I don't want to, we do have a couple slides here. So, um, so this exercise, we uploaded a Conan package. Very um, particularly, we uploaded the package multiple times from different build machines and they all showed up under the same recipe reference. Um, we showed some easy commands for remote management um, we showed that Conan Center always comes installed uh, by default. And um, we, we did show that the local Conan cache, it, which exists under Conan data, can be shared by any number of local projects and builds. We actually showed that a bit earlier. But uh, the idea of the local and remote repository strategy is very similar to other package managers. And we feel that that's very important because this provides a practical and familiar developer experience for not just the developers, but also build engineers and people who 
whose job it is to set up automated build pipelines. Um, oftentimes they're working with multiple package managers and multiple languages and Conan fitting into that process in a way that they're used to is very helpful. Um, and uh, it makes the tooling better. It makes things like CI servers and other tools interact a little more sensibly than say if we did um, if we didn't have this these abstractions. So finally, we demonstrated how Artifactory CE provides free local hosting of Conan repositories and how fast and easy it is to set up an instance and start uploading packages to it. When we started this, I truly did not have Artifactory installed. I started Artifactory in a container with a Docker command and I was able to immediately start uploading and downloading to it. So um, it can be that easy for you and for your dev teams as well. So that's all the exercises I have for today, which is a shame because there are so many different features that we didn't even get to show. But with that said, here are the places you can go to learn more about those features. Um, on the homepage at Conan.io, you can find links to each of the following resources. Each is valuable in its own way. And depending on your environment and your interests and needs, we hope you'll find them helpful. Uh, also, if you wanna just chat with me, the Conan team or other Conan users, you can find us all on Slack in the CPP Lang community. Uh, there is a channel dedicated to Conan, um, hashtag Conan. So you can sign up there and you know ask questions and, and just direct message any of us if you need. In closing, I really want to thank um, Adi and uh, everyone here for attending, um, for allowing us to present. And I hope the session was enjoyable and informative. Um, I hope you are able to download and run the demonstrations for yourself locally. And I do wanna hear from anyone who has any trouble um, or success. If in any case, if you uh, feel free to mention us on Twitter or LinkedIn, let us know what you thought. Um, but at this point, I'll be happy to take any questions and comments or any feedback at all.